Assalamualaikum and hi. So we are now reaching in chapter 8, which is the concept evaluation system. Now in chapter 8, you will learn the criteria for early stage screening assessment. The second one, you will learn about the risk or payoff metrics at each evaluation. The third will be the planning of the evaluation system, which consists of four concepts. And the last one, you will learn about the ATAR model of innovation diffusion. So, when you start to have a screening assessment, what are the things that you need to look for? So, the first one is the uniqueness. Is your idea original or is it easily copied by the competitors? The second one is need fulfillment. So, for your idea, for your concept, does it meet the customer demand? Do they benefit from it? The third one is the feasibility. Do you think that you, would, you can develop or you can launch it? In terms of the impact, how will your firm be affected with this idea? And in terms of the scalability and the strategic fit, does it really match with your corporate strategy or culture? So these are the criteria you need to look at when you screen your product idea. Now, we shall look at the cumulative expenditures curve. This graph actually shows, in terms of the types of the products, there are certain cumulative expenditures that will be costly when you develop two types of products, which is either high-tech products or consumer products. So if you look here at the x-axis, it shows the time of the launch. And on the y-axis, it shows the percentage of the expenditures. So the early expenditure curve, it is actually the representative of the product development, shows in the technical fields. So if you look, there's a higher curve on, on many high-tech products, such as pharmaceutical industries, from the optics industry, or from the computer industry. So research and development is the big part of the cost package, while marketing only costs relatively small. Now, the lower curve in this figure shows the opposite type of the firm, where products from the consumer goods company requires a small expenditure in technical, whereby a huge cost of advertisement or marketing needed at the end of the launch. Now, when you evaluate, this is a risk or payoff matrix where it shows that there consists of four concepts or four outcomes or four decisions options. So if you look here, there is a type of success or failure. Okay, and uh, there are two decision options at the time, which is move on or you want to kill the project. So basically, in these four cells in this matrix, the AA cell and the BB cell are fine. We drop a concept that would ultimately fail. Or do you continue on a concept that would ultimately succeed? The managerial problem will arise in the other two cells, which is AB or BA. AB is a drop error. What's a drop error? This is where a winner will be discarded. But BA is go error. It means the, lo the loser will continue to the next evaluation point. So a question arises: Which error does the manager most want to avoid? So this answer actually depends on the ringgit or the dollars. First, throwing out a winner would be very costly. But... Error AB is much worse than BA. So the exception, of course, is the opportunity cost. What other project is standing by waiting for funding? When good candidates wait in the wings, the losers of dropping a winner are much less because the money diverted will likely go to the another winner. The point is, a manager must think of these matters when deciding what evaluation to do. If the net cost of the next step in any situation are low, then a decision will probably be made to go ahead, perhaps with very little information. So for example, like the company I used to say, PNG, when they when they want to sell Febreze or Dryel, 
Okay, it will require an extensive market testing. A lengthy test marketing, which is shows as a very risky and new to the world products. So what about other detergents about PNG? So you need to look which to avoid. The next one is the four concepts when you want to plan the evaluation system. The first one is the rolling evaluation. The second is the potholes. The third is the people. And the last one is surrogates. So the first one is rolling evaluation. So the, in the rolling evaluation, the project or the product that you're doing, it must be assessed continuously. You cannot just go, go and no go decision. And for the analysis of the finance, you need to start and do it continuously as well. Because you will then have not enough data early. So you must do the analysis early. Because it will run risk of killing off too many good ideas early. Of course, the marketing must begin early too. So for the participants, you need to avoid the good or bad mindset. And you need to close your mind on the premature ones. The next one is the potholes. You need to know what are the problems that will happen. That will happen when it is sold to the market. So you need to simulate. So the examples would be Campbell Soup focuses on manufacturing costs and taste. So you need to know what are the problems there. And the drugs companies, they will focus on the FDA approval because the FDA approval is the most problematic ones because they need to get the approval from the FDA. And the software de developers, they need to focus on the customer unwillingness to learn how to use complex software. So from there, you need to know what are the problems that will happen. And you need to focus on them when you want to evaluate the concepts. How about the people? The proposal may be hard to stop once there is a buy-in on the concept. It means when people are starting to convince, be convinced, so the proposal might hard to be stopped. And there's a need for tough demanding hurdles, especially late in the new products process. And the, pers and the personal risk associated with new product development. So there's a need, a system that protects developers and offers reassurance if warranted. The fourth one is surrogates. So when you want to ask your customers, when you have done the prototype, you need to give them clues and not just give the real question. You should not answer, do you prefer it? But you should change a bit the question to, do you keep the prototype product after, you give, uh, after we give them after the concept test? Will the cost be correlative? No, instead, you need to know, does it match with our manufacturing skills? So you need to avoid all these real questions, but giving more surrogate questions, which is actually close to the real answer. The next one you can do to evaluate your concept is using the ATAR model to determine how much profit that you can get from the concept. There's a calculation for it. So the profit contribution forecast will be as R calculated as potential times the awareness times with T trying times with R retailers times with margin. So this is the uh, one example whereby we give the concept of video cell phones. So you need to know what is the number of owners of the video cell phones, which is who are your potential buying units. So you can forecast it will have 15 million of the owners that can buy your potential product. Now, how much percent that you think your percentage of owners are aware of your new cellular picture phone camera? 
So you will forecast to have 40%. So what is the percentage of the owners after they're aware they will decide to try during the first year? So you can forecast to become 24%. And the percentage of the retailers who are convinced to stock, to stock the new phone during the market uh, introduction, introduction period would be 70%. So to keep things simple, assume that the potential buyers probably will not seek beyond one store if they cannot find it here. So the percentage of the actual triers, the one who actually tried the, your product, enough to repeat the purchase within the first year will be 22%. And the number of additional units bought by these repeat buyers would be one. That is, they buy a total of new phones, two phones, possibly one for home use and one for office use. So the average is one. And the Ringgit Malaysia revenue at the factory per device after trade margins and promotion discount would be 400. And the unit cost would be 200. So with all this information, Okay, you can get the formula and calculate it under this formula. And remember as R, R is actually 1 plus the percentage of repeaters, which is the 22%, you make it as 0 0.22 times with 1, which is the additional of, uh, number of additional units as R. And then you put in the formula under the potential times awareness, AW, which is 40%, T, trying which is 40, 24% and R 1.22 times the margin which is the revenue minus the cost. So with that you will get a total profit contribution forecast as 351,000, 351,360,000 ringgit. With that thank you very much.